Hey everybody, Plasma1945 with you here, and we're gonna have a drag race as to which loads faster, fastest, or the very fastest off of your computer. So for this test, we're gonna do some basics first. So let's imagine DCS and all of its modules and airplanes as a delivery truck by a big building. That big building is your computer. And first, you have to bring up the products up to the memory, which is in orange here, and the memory is a lot faster than your storage. And then once the memory is loaded up, it'll transfer into your video card VRAM. And most of the time, if you have a regular hard drive, you're gonna be carrying it one or two boxes at a time on a staircase, which is pretty darn slow. And this is using a regular spinning hard drive, but you can make things go faster. And for that, what you do is you get yourself an SSD drive or an NVMe drive, which is even faster. And it's like having an elevator or an express elevator that'll take the products, AKA modules and components of the game right into the memory really quick and from the memory into your video RAM. The other important thing is the more memory you have that's in yellow, the more items you can preload and ready for fast access and transfer into your video memory. So you need to go less to the hard drive. So I'll give you an example of the three drives I have in my machine. One is a Seagate Iron Wolf. That's a regular plain old hard drive that spins at 7200 RPM and has a buffer of 256 megabytes of RAM. And that's just to kind of help it go a little faster for bigger files. But compared to that, the Samsung SSD 860 Evo, that's a one terabyte drive. It's internal and it's about two to three times faster than the Iron Wolf hard drive that spins. Now, the third and the fastest component in my machine is the 970 Evo NVMe drive that plugs directly into your motherboard and pretty much transfers as fast as you can possibly be other than having the RAM itself using as storage but that's a whole different kind of worms. So that's the three setups. And for this test, what I did is I took the same DCS installation with just four or five modules and copied it to each of the drives, ran the test from each of the drives, recorded, and then I tried to synchronize it as best as I could. If it's off by half a second or one second, I'm sorry, I tried my best, but not a professional benchmarker, but just to give you an idea. So first things first, this is a test of starting up DCS after a reboot, starting it cold, and seeing how long it would take for the actual game to load up so that it shows up on the main DCS screen. So again, top left-hand corner is your regular hard drive, right below it is the SSD, and then the NVMe drive, and I clicked on the background so you can't see the logo, but I do promise that it is loading in the background on the hard drive as well. So going back to talking about the importance of memory, RAM is really crucial because uh, there's a lot of planes, there's a lot of trains and a lot of environments in DCS. And the more detail there is in the map, the more detail there is in the plane, the more of it needs to be stored close by, close by to the CPU and to the video card. And that's really the RAM. So if you can try to get your RAM up to at least 32 gigabytes of RAM, and try to have an SSD or an NVMe drive because this is going to blow your mind. So okay, the numbers are starting to load up here, so let's take a peek. And see how long it takes for a full startup. So one minute and 12 seconds for the NVMe, one minute and 15 seconds for the SSD. And now I'm actually going even faster at double time because I didn't want to make you guys suffer through watching the clock go by. And finally, there we go. The regular old hard drive is starting to catch up and it's gonna load up another couple of seconds here. But one minute and 48 seconds for the regular old hard drive. So fairly significant just to get the game started and all that it did is just load up the modules and load up the settings, but not the actual planes or the maps. It just, this is just to get to the interface. But all right, let's say we want to do a mission. So this is a, Quick Mission Instant Action SU-27 Bomber Intercept. So let's see how long this takes to show up. So for the SU-27 Bomber Intercept, pretty darn quick for the NVMe as expected. And there we go, 21 seconds, and we're in the cockpit and ready to fly. The SSD is coming up strong right behind it, 27 seconds, so six seconds longer and both planes are flying, but now we're at four times the speed 
just trying to get the uh, hard drive loaded up and it is really going it's trying its very very best but uh, it's got no chance compared to the SSD and the NVMe all right finally at 1 minute and 44 seconds the airplane has loaded up and you're ready to fly in that instant action similarly connecting to a multiplayer server so this server is actually about 10 feet away from me it's uh, my own private red star trading server and to connect to it from double clicking on join server 11 seconds on the nvme 13 seconds on the ssd and going at four times the speed it's pretty significant at 44 seconds to connect to the server if your game is on a regular hard drive so that is uh it's fairly significant and from this point, we haven't even jumped into a plane. So let's jump into a plane next and take a look to see what happens there. One of the most complex modules that I found is the F-14 Tomcat. So from the time to click on the actual plane to start and get into the cockpit, it takes six seconds on the NVMe, nine seconds on the SSD, and we're gonna run four times the speed and wait for the textures, the graphics, and the sounds of the Tomcat to load up from the regular hard drive and that is going to take a while come on you can do it there you go one full minute so that's almost five times slower than loading from an ssd and the nvme so as you can see there is significant differences by watching the uh, loading processes i also noticed that interestingly enough if you have loaded up your game once and if you've loaded up into a plane such as say the su-27 or the tomcat the subsequent times you load back into it the loading time cuts down to almost an insignificant uh three to five seconds now that is faster the more memory you have so for example if you only have 16 gigabytes of ram it will take much longer to load into that plane again after you've landed or if you've chosen a different plane Similarly, if you reconnect to a server, the more memory you have, the more the computer can dump into it from the hard drive and the NVMe drive or the SSD so that it's basically sitting there on standby. But eventually, as the memory gets used up, DCS will throw out that extra used up components and say, okay, I need the space for something else. So this is where 32 gigabytes of RAM makes a huge difference. And similarly on the video card, if you have four gigabytes, six gigabytes, or say eight gigabytes of video RAM, what will happen is as the game progresses, as it loads up different components, it will need to throw something out of the video card memory. So of course, the more video card memory you have, the less the game has to go back to the RAM or all the way down to the basement of the building to get the files from the hard drive or the NVMe or the SSD. So hopefully this was uh, eye-opening, it definitely was for me. And uh, if you can, get an SSD or an NVMe drive just for DCS, drop it on there and uh, get better performance. Faster loading, both to a server and into a plane. Thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully you've liked this video. Give it a thumbs up and a like and all the other good stuff and uh, catch me on uh, Growling Sidewinder or other PVP servers. Look for Plasma. Talk to you later.